Thank you very much for being here with us. Please tell me your name uh, and your project and what is your role in the project. My name is Yanni or Yanislav Malarov. I'm the founder and um, yeah, CEO of the Eternity Establishment. We are developing a blockchain called Eternity Blockchain. Um, we launched it already in 2018 with a public mainnet. We did a, one of the more famous uh, token sales in 2017. And uh, yeah, I'm almost now for 10 years in the crypto space. I went uh, to my first Bitcoin meetup in 2011. And I realized that the people who are involved in this or were involved back then was a very interesting, very fascinating crowd or combination of people. And I stayed in touch with, uh, let's say, this very small community since then. And yeah, uh, in late 2012, I decided to become a blockchain professional. I was involved in multiple uh, blockchain projects, for example, the Dark Wallet, uh, which was a crowdfunding campaign for a uh, a wallet, a mobile privacy focus, no, a, a web based a privacy focused uh, wallet for Bitcoin. And uh, I created probably the first uh, browser wallet for Dogecoin. Um, I maybe have created the first NFT token wallet for issuance as well as transfers together with Vitalik Buterin and Trent McGonaghy in 2013 as well. And since I was working with Vitalik, uh, uh, we were frequently chatting about what we could improve over uh, yeah, uh, having tokens on blockchains. And so I suggested to him in a, in a chat to have uh, updatable algorithms. Um, and I posted this chat log with his permission under the title Godfather of Ethereum, where I described my background uh, connection to the Ethereum project. And yeah. Uh, now, uh, let's see what uh, uh, was your thinking and what was the basis in creating uh, your new blockchain yeah. what uh, what were the, uh, the deciding factors mm -hmm. and the features that you wanted it to have mm -hmm. yeah um, my background is computer science I was studied in Munich um, computer science and economics as a minor and yeah I I mean, how I got to crypto is I googled, I literally googled for cryptocurrency, knowing that we need crypto and we need probably new currencies and we need to combine these things. And uh, with Eternity Blockchain, um, I mean, I, I wasn't really happy with uh, what was available back then on the markets, um, meaning there was only Ethereum as a smart contract platform. And as you probably, or as probably everybody now understands, there cannot be just one blockchain where we put all the transactions which uh, people are going to need, uh, whether it's like monetary transactions or I don't know, um, more complex financial instruments or just notarization um, statements on the blockchain. So we need to scale. We need to have ways how we can uh, yeah, uh, handle billions of transactions every day, many billions of transactions every day. So to improve the scalability was uh, from the beginning on uh, very important for uh, the Eternity blockchain project. Um, so yeah, uh, we, we built in state channels, um, state channels kind of like the payment channels on the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, you can do them also for smart contracts on, for example, Ethereum, but we built them into the um, protocol itself, meaning the smart contract language with eternity in the virtual machines understands already what state channels are. So it's really streamlined. The experience is really streamlined to open up a state channel and in the future also to network it and other scalability improvements as well. Um, you uh, chose a very exotic uh, language, uh, mm -hmm. Erlang, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, be the basis. Mm -hmm. Um, Erlang was designed for real-time, high transaction, uh, um, reliable performance mm -hmm. uh, operations originally yeah. by the telecommunications industry, yeah. by Ericsson. Yeah. Um, and it does that very well. Yeah. However, it is still a pretty exotic language. So, uh, do you find the trade-off between its ability to be expressive in certain way and not a lot of people knowing the language intimately uh, a right kind of trade-off? 
interesting question. I don't believe it's so exotic. Everybody is using Erlang every day with every phone call you do or every time you go online or every WhatsApp message you send. There's Erlang back, uh, running in the background. Um, not many people know of this, but the telecommunication switches are run or running Erlang. And yes, it was invented by Ericsson in the year I was also made, or the same year, I think we were the same age, me and Erlang. And uh, it's, uh, it was at the beginning, I must say, it was a positive thing because um, not every developer learns Erlang, meaning they're all uh, self-driven, highly intelligent people who are starting things with Erlang, especially becoming professionals in this field. This is mm -hmm. not something for everyone. But we were able to hire, we believe, the, the best uh, development team which ever designed and developed a blockchain. Like four, four uh, people who have co-created or solely created programming languages and virtual machines in the past, such as the co-creator of Scala, the sole creator of Acta, the co-creator of Pascal, and the co-creator of Erlang, um, Robert Werding. Um, we hired them and also um, three more PhDs and other people, highly skilled developers, Erlang professionals. We put them into this original core development team and it's, it, was, uh, it was almost like a wonder, meaning I was uh, very pleasantly surprised by how well we built this team to create this uh, the, the blockchain, the Eternity blockchain. Uh, so this was a, definitely kind of like a benefit, I thought. Um, it was also interesting that uh, the, the last day of our token sale was also the uh, day of the yearly Erlang user conference where I went to in Stockholm and obviously I was very excited and I showed everybody like what we did and that we have now funding to build the next generation smart contract platform in Erlang. So we attracted really the best people in the Erlang world, probably the best team which ever existed in the Erlang world was working on the Eternity blockchain. And um, yeah, we launched it in 2018. Since then, um, yeah, the world changed a little bit. Also through COVID, people um, went actually more online. So the, the big internet giants, they had more demand for Erlang developers. And I must say right now, it isn't that easy as to, to build such a great team again. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we have still some of the people from the original team involved, um, but uh, yeah, um, when, for example, Facebook uh, pays double the price, uh, then we would like to pay, or we have paid in the past, it's difficult to compete. So yeah, Erlang is really everywhere, it's not exotic, and there's a high demand right now for it. So, um, you said before that uh, multiple blockchains are needed, and that uh, the different uh, applications are different uh, use cases. Probably you don't feel that, that Bitcoin has no role to play mm -hmm. uh, and maybe some of the things that Bitcoin does uh, Eternity could do but maybe it shouldn't do. What mm -hmm. is in particular the uh, two or three use cases that you would highlight for, mm -hmm. for Eternity? Yeah, first I would like to also state that I'm kind of like a Bitcoin maximalist as well, although we are working on Eternity blockchain because I believe there is only one Bitcoin, there should be always mm -hmm. maximum only 21 billion Bitcoins, mm -hmm. and it's the Bitcoin with the largest amount of proof of work, mm -hmm. so the, it has a symbol BTC, all the other so-called Bitcoins, there are no real Bitcoins for me, and I really believe that Bitcoin uh, needs to have success or will have success also to strengthen all the other cryptocurrencies and uh, it's the longest uh, project in the field, the first blockchain you can say, uh, that has probably the largest network effects, uh, the biggest, the strongest brand. Uh, so many people can't pronounce Ethereum even or write it, uh, spell it, like I was in a Forbes article where Ethereum was consistently spelled wrong, for example. Um, so um, with Eternity blockchain, I mean, it's obviously different than Bitcoin. Um, I believe um, although there's only one Bitcoin, I don't believe that there can be only one blockchain or one token for everything. So we need to have more innovation. And I think Eternity blockchain, what we're doing there is really to create the next generation of smart contract platform um, next after essentially Ethereum. Um, you could also say that Bitcoin is a simple smart contract platform. You can have uh, scripts there in a fourth like language. But the use cases which you are asking for, uh, what I'm super interested in is real estate tokenization. Um, so 
Uh, real estate currently is highly illiquid, but everybody needs it every day. Um, everybody is using real estate, um, and um, not very many people can actually afford to buy one apartment or a piece of real estate. But I think everybody should be able to afford to buy at least a fraction of a real estate, especially if they live in or if they're using it on a day-to-day -day basis. I think it should be almost like a human right that this market uh, gets like uh, more, becomes more liquid that people can buy and own a real estate. Uh, so we are working on a, on a real estate tokenization project, the so-called Crypto Castle project. Um, there should be soon a website live on cryptocastle.org. Um, it's a castle in, in Germany where we also hosted the first uh, Bitcoin uh, conference uh, after the beginning of Corona a couple mm -hmm. months ago. And um, yeah, besides real estate tokenization, I, I think uh, decentralized finance is uh, absolutely uh, uh, great, uh, meaning uh, people should have also access to modern financial tools all around the world, no matter where they are. Uh, is, yeah. it, is it correct to say that with uh, uh, Crypto Casa, for example, mm -hmm. you are competing with potential third-party developers rather than driving the platform? Yeah. Uh, you are going into application areas instead. We were, we were waiting for uh, a killer use case uh, and we also invested into uh, a bunch of projects, uh, probably around 25 projects um, mm -hmm. or we're g giving them grants, like even more yeah. grants or bounties to community members. Unfortunately, none of these projects so far um, yeah, fulfilled the promise to become like a killer use case for the mm -hmm. Eternity blockchain. So yeah, uh, we are driving uh, this uh, in multiple uh, uh, like uh, fronts. Do you say like yeah. fronts? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, very important for us is also the the improvement of the development tools for the Eternity blockchain. I mean, the blockchain launched already in 2018. Um, there have been some uh, modifications, some upgrades to it via a scheduled hard fork approach. So uh, some new features got launched, but uh, fundamentally um, the blockchain itself hasn't changed too much. But what's, what's, really, what's really now is very important is to create a better development experience. So we want to have the best development experience possible. Mm -hmm. And for this is also really great to have such projects which are building on top of the blockchain so that we suffer from the same pain which other developers are feeling so that we can fix these problems easier with the... That's, if, that's yeah. right. So um, how does your roadmap compare with uh, for example, uh, an Ethereum roadmap in terms of scalability. Ethereum is going towards proof of stake. Yeah. Um, how do you see those two areas? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So I, I generally believe that proof of work is a very useful mechanism, um, and we are working on the on the hyperchain consensus. Um, model um, and uh, with uh, this new consensus model everybody will be able to launch an eternity style blockchain being secured by a proof of work parent chain um, we're gonna first probably try to go for Bitcoin um, so we're gonna create uh, a new eternity blockchain which is hooked into the Bitcoin blockchain. So we're using the proof of work from the Bitcoin blockchain to secure a proof of stake child chain, you could say. And this child chain can then have also further child chains. So uh, arranging them in a tree and these chains exchanging value through cross-chain atomic swaps. Mm -hmm. I believe that this is the most elegant way to scale and to yeah, bring crypto or tokens or uh, modern financial instruments to all the population of this, this world. And um, yeah, with proof of work, it's, the problem is that if you have a low market cap, the security is also low. Yeah. Uh, so uh, with proof of work blockchains, the security is actually a function of the time passed or the amount of work done, which is uh, related to time. And um, yeah, um, we had there was an attack on some exchanges last December, so uh, ten months ago, um, and this caused uh, some some problems. Since then, um, I mean, a checkpoint, a rolling checkpoint mechanism was also implemented, but it's not 
exactly how um, how we want it to be. Meaning, with the new hyperchange consensus, um, we will let we will let uh, people or the users vote uh, whether they want to uh, move their tokens or have essentially also tokens on this on a new uh, hyperchain. We mm -hmm. call it. We don't call it anymore blockchain. It's. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's. Uh, it's uh, inspired by a blockchain, but um, it's... Uh, and um, yeah. have you published uh, this proposal? What were the reactions uh, to the proposal? Yeah, yeah we, we published uh, a white paper about this and uh, generally uh, we are publishing development updates on the progress of the development. It's ongoing, it's uh, done by the Eternity Crypto Foundation based in Vaduz Liechtenstein, I mean, managed by them. And um, yeah, there are around uh, 10 core developers working on this at the moment. Um, and the community is really waiting for this. Um, they're really hungry, yeah. And, uh, and so what will be the measure of success of a hyperchain architecture? Mm -hmm. uh, you said we will use it with Bitcoin first. Bitcoin is a permissionless yeah. environment, so yeah. of course you can. And yeah. if you succeed, that's good. Yeah. How will you measure adoption? Will it be the applications uh, that uh, that use it, yeah. uh, or the wallets that adopt it? What will be your measure of success? I think the easiest way how to measure success is transaction volume. Mm -hmm. So the higher the transaction volume is by real actors, the better. So the more users do more valuable transactions, the better. Okay. So uh, what is your benchmark? Uh, Hyperchain transaction volume uh, exceeding uh, Ethereum transaction volume. I, I mean, this is easy. Meaning, the Trinity blockchain mainnet already does more transactions than the Ethereum blockchain. Our virtual machine, the so-called Fate virtual machine, is ten times more space efficient, and uh, the Erlang nodes are really fast communicating with mm -hmm. each other. They're really. I mean, Erlang is exactly the for best parallel for computation. Doing yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the APIs, yeah. For the okay. So what is uh, what is the other uh, more transactions than Visa? More transactions than Visa? Well, um, it should be also achievable. I mean, if we if we really uh, create a tree of chains using this hyperchain consensus mechanism, you can have infinite on-chain scalability. This is not a problem anymore. There was also a concept called Tree Chains published, I think, by Peter Todd, who envisioned this for the Bitcoin blockchain. Unfortunately, Bitcoin blockchain or Bitcoin community is, for reasons I totally understand, very uh, conservative. conservative. They almost don't want to change anything and talk years about every change. And uh, I, I, I'm personally, I like to innovate faster. So this was maybe also one of the main reasons why I started. Well, uh, because uh, it is not a trillion dollars exactly. that is secured by uh, eternity. Exactly. Now, is it the case that you expect attacks against hyperchain and how will you deal with them? Yes, uh, for sure. If there's value involved, there are going to be people um, who would like to attack. Um, yeah. Um, so system. you will have a bug bounty program, or yes. uh, uh, how how will you um, create the incentives towards creation rather than towards destruction? Yes, uh, bug bounty program we already have. Uh, this will be obviously uh, set up in a new way for hyperchains when this launches. I mm -hmm. uh, will have a security review, obviously um, for multiple reasons, um, not just the technical security. And um, I find also the approach of, uh, of uh, parity interesting, of uh, Kosama and uh, Polkadot, meaning Polkadot, uh, Kosama being kind of like the low value uh, experimental um, version of, mm -hmm. uh, of Polkadot. Um, we might also go for a similar approach, mm -hmm. so where we kind of like load a, a test net with value through buying the coins and telling people, please break it. In case you break it, you can keep the coins. Uh, but uh, look at Kosama's market cap. It isn't that low value anymore. So, <laughs> um. And then maybe it needs to flip. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah very interesting. Well, good luck uh, with the next steps uh, of uh, Eternity and the launch of these new initiatives. And thank you very much for being here with me today. Thank you. It was my pleasure. And... Yeah, um, great, thanks. Great.